My name is Ian Anderson, I'm here from iGel Technology. I'm a pre-sales engineer for iGel. Um, I've been with iGel for uh, about six months, it's on rural long term. Uh, but uh, I need to talk to you today about other technology, about how it works. Uh, the focus is on the UDC2, which is our conversion software to convert old PCs into big clients. Uh, but we'll cover some other stuff as well, because you need to know about what our software does uh, to manage those big clients, as well as actually the conversion process. So, uh, we'll do a couple of, a couple of demos, um, I think um, Alex, the organizer, has asked us to do only recorded demos, but I have thrown out the window and decided to do some live demos for you, so you don't get too excited, but you know, there will be some live demos, and potential things to go massively wrong, and you can laugh. So uh, we're trying to avoid that we can, but it might happen. So first thing, um, iGel, this thing here on my, on my uh, breast here. Everyone, we also ask the question, why a hedgehog? Because, okay, well, I mean, why are hedgehogs? Yeah, that's fair enough. This is a fair enough question to ask. Unless you're German, in which case you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but, wait, other people don't know. So, um, Eagle is actually how it's pronounced in German. And it stands for this. Innovative Gesamtschlossung in the German term is terrible. But there you go, that's what it stands for. Uh, but, obviously, that's a great English speaking country, so people don't know what that means. Uh, and it's been loosely translated, and the Germans will laugh into intelligent German electronics. Very German. <laughs> so we take those letters, basically the letters fit, so we use them, right? So we take those bits, and that means hedgehog in German. So uh, that's what Eagle is, and Eagle is how we pronounce it in, in German, and uh, I doubt anywhere else in the world, because everyone loves an I, don't they? An I something or other. Okay, but not, obviously not for copyright reasons, that's not why I'm not saying that. Um, but who are we? So we're a European-based think pipe vendor. Um, we are the third largest think pipe vendor worldwide, depending on whose figures you believe, because um, everyone's are different. And um, we were the creator of the software think pipe, and we're also the creator of the Linux think pipe. So we've been doing this since uh, 1989. I was six, which is fun. But so yeah, um, so we've got quite a lot of the original development team uh, who built the very first Linux think pipe, still working for us, still developing the code and building the thing plan to do what it does today. Now, why would you choose iGel? Um, well, what we really like to do is show our case studies. Now, on our website, we've loaded case studies to see what our customers say about our products. But the main things that make us different is the fact that we have our, our software thing plan. And our software is completely flexible. We're vendor agnostic. We don't even care whether you're using Microsoft, Citrix, Whoever, VMware, wherever you want to go, we two X, whoever. We support all of those things and we're completely agnostic. If we haven't got it in our product supported, ask us, we'll put it in for you. So um, we, can, we can cover everything. So that means that uh, you know we're not pushing customers down down narrow alleyways they can't get out of we're always being open and flexible. And it's a true thing about like OS that we operate. We're not just making Windows, which is quite a big heavy fat operating system, and kind of customizing, making some more changes in and um, bringing it into a thing like the building site from the ground up that's designed to be, excuse me, a thing client will behave as a thing client should behave. So that's, so that's what really stands us out from that. Uh, well, the other thing that really makes us different is that if you take those, those top three companies that are selling thing clients, um, we only sell thing clients and thing client software. We don't do anything else. We're not selling new virtualization, backend infrastructure. All we're doing is concentrating on the endpoint. So we are solely focused on making the endpoint behavior as well. And that's all we do. And that's why we're a little different. Like, oh, the linchpin of all of our products is UMS, Universal Management Suite. Um, it's on version 5, so it's been changed quite a few times. And the key benefits of it are things like zero touch rollout. So we can put clients out anywhere in the world, connect them to UMS. They're all fastly configured themselves, download the latest version of the firmware, bring themselves into your management, you know, very, very easy. So that's uh, what we try and do with it. It's really light. It's also the simplest management tool to install. I've worked with three thin client vendors, and I can honestly tell you that this is the easiest program to install I can have for any other vendor I've worked with. Um, it's so fast to install, I'm going to show you what this all looks like on a video. It's uh, very quick. Some of you may have worked with other things like um, software, but we'll show you. So, the first thing you have to do is go to myigel.biz, which is a website where we store all of our 
all of our software. Click on the UMS link. Find the Windows version, the latest version if you want to install Linux. Scroll down to the latest version. Download the latest version. This is actually the longest part of the installation process for this download. So through the art of video editing, you will see that I can make it a bit quicker and still get the art out. But there it is. Um, you can download it and ready to go. So we run the installation. And this is what uh, we like to call a next party. So it's just a bit of a case of risk and thinking next on everything. Uh, here it's asking you to read the uh, agreement. Obviously, you have to read all of it and then click next. Uh, and then you can scroll through. It's asking you for a default install location. It's asking you whether you want to install the database and the console or just the console. You want to, I know it's a bit small here, but if you want to install just the console, you can click on link down here and change it to only install the console. So if you've got <coughs> other machines that aren't your server and you want to connect them into your UMS to, to run and run it, you can do it via like this. Okay, it's asking for your default file directory. Again, you can put any location you want on the machine. We're just doing defaults. So it asks you to create an administrator password to username. Try not to forget this because it's a pain because you have to then go in and open another piece of uh, software and, and change it later on. So, Enter in the username, the username you're going to use the password, hit next, and it'll take you through to the install process. You still have the slip on your mouse in the video, but yeah. And there it is, doing the install. And that's it. And that's, a, that's a full installation of our enterprise management suite or universal management suite. Um, once the uh, ever present Windows taskbar disappears, And really, I wanted to show you this because anyone who's going to use our products is going to be using UMS, so they're going to have to install this and have to run it. Uh, this will show you how easy it is to do. So to create a demo environment of our software is very, very easy. Okay. And there it is. What you need to do now once it's finished is to click on the UMS icon. So what I'll do now is actually show you the UMS and how it works. So you'll see how the software functions. So I'm running a few VMs here with my environment set up on it. Uh, and this is Universal Management of Suite 5. Uh, this is the first screen you see when you first install UMS. Obviously there's a lot of stuff in here that I've kind of fiddled around with. There's a firmware version of it in here that I use for the demo and testing. Uh, but this is what you see. And the way it works is we have profiles. Profiles are just sets of configurations that we create to connect devices to, to drinks, to VMs, whatever customize things like the desktop images to change. Basically anything that you can have within our operating system can be customized from within these profiles. But what do we manage with these profiles? We manage the thin client, so to speak. So let me show you what the thin client looks like. This is a, uh, a virtual thin client. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's our conversion software running in a virtual machine. But this is what you essentially see when you run a, uh, one of our clients. The setup button here that now acts as the setup on the devices. So what you see here in this setup is a list of um, configuration changes. So we have things like establishing remote sessions, uh, adding, accessor uh, adding accessories, uh, like uh, changing the user interface. These are all things that should be done locally on the device. But if I look, if I go to my UMX and I create what we call a profile, which is a set of configurations. Firmware versions. Okay. And what you'll get is a menu that looks very, very similar. There's a message from our boss there saying, How did it go, mate? It's still going. Okay. There it is. Do you see a list of, uh, of exactly the same things that you see on the thin client? So the point is, is that everything we can do on our thin client is exactly manageable from within the the operating from the UMS. It's a, from the ground up built to work together. So nothing is off limits. We fill out just the register. Yes. Are you going to describe what exactly the, the OS is on the clients themselves? So is it again it's Linux based? And yeah, yeah, of course. Based? Yeah. So, uh, like how small it really is? It's, it's, pretty, it's, it's sort of um, it's a few hundred meg, uh, depending on, on, uh, on the version you're using. Um, it's based on Ubuntu. Uh, it's on the LTS version of Ubuntu, and we customize that and we make it into uh, our own operating system. It's built on those parts of the list. 
do you strip out like key, the uh, user interface? I mean, there's, could you write like Zelda on it? Or well, we strip out a lot of stuff, but anything, okay. anything that you want to add into the OS, we have a team in Germany called the Custom Partitions Team, and they can take any existing Linux distro or whatever you want to put onto one of our clients, it's called a custom partition, and you can dump that into the OS and drop it onto the client and configure the client in that way. So, uh, yeah, whatever you want to run within Linux, if it's got an Ubuntu version, we can sort of do a practical version, we can drop that into, a, into our devices. So, even if you have a piece of software that we don't have, we can bring it in. And we have a team that, that's all they do in Germany uh, and now for, um, so they can spend all their time updating and changing these custom partitions for you, so we can build it on it. So, these profiles, um, the way that they work, uh, we have obviously thin clients, and when you want to bring a thin client into our UMS, we hit the scan button, and we can go and scan the network, we can put in a list of IP ranges, we can have a preset list of IP ranges, or we can scan the flat network, and hit scan, put it into a feedback. If it's on the thin client, we hit the include button and we hit OK. And that thin client, I've already got it in here, so I'll show you after. My thin client shows up. Yes. It's listed by its name. Wow. It's like a mistake in that. OK, there we go. So um, it lists the thin client. I can see all the attributes of the thin client. I know you can't quite see on, on the screen, but it shows you all the things like the how. Uh, how long the device has been on, on the network, you know, what firmware version is running, um, its MAC address, all that kind of information about what the device is. Um, and that device is at the moment sat in a group which, which has, uh, it's called Sheep Dip, that's what I like to call it. Uh, uh, it's where I drop big clients to, to wipe out any settings that are on the result of that Sheep Dip. But essentially it's just sat in a folder and it has uh, only one profile assigned to it which allows me to do VNC, to connect VNC to the device. But if I want to configure that terminal to do something else, all I have to do is take my thin client and drag and drop it onto a, a folder that I created. So I've got a uh, folder here called demo. And in demo I've got some, some folders set up. I've got a couple of countries and I've got to select each one of those countries. If I take my thin client and drag and drop it onto a particular country on a site, and I get not a message box here saying, when do I want my device to be updated? You get two options. You get next reboot, you get now. We would never recommend you click now, because if you do now, things will change, and the users will, will have a bit of a fit when messages pop up on their screens and get those help desk calls. So you always make sure you click next reboot and not now. But Why show the option? Sorry? Why show the option? You could <laughs> never do it. Um, it would be nice to give you the option. That's okay. Right. <laughs> and also it's good for things like now when I'm doing a demo or if you're running a testing environment, you can have that option. There is actually a tick box which you can't read here which says always apply settings on next reboot. So most people will, will do that. Uh, but there is always the option to do it anyway. So I'm going to do now. Go back to my thing plan. And it gets a notification message saying it's got a change. Hit OK. And it moves it into that directory. And what it does is it applies my generic newspaper. Um, and it also, so it's downloaded that image from, from the profile, from the UMS server, applied it as a desktop image. It's also removed the, the setup logo, the setup icon, so users can't now click on it. So the point is, is that to configure a client, what I have to do is literally drag and drop it onto a, a preset set of folders that I've created, with profiles attached, profiles for you know, changing the desktop, removing the startup, or even connecting this up to you on, say, after my preset, whatever. And to make changes to those, it's very simple. So my site one here has got um, a profile applied that has um, changed the wallpaper and hiding the setup. They're two separate profiles. But if I move that into another site with a different set of profiles, and you get the same configuration message. You down into new wallpaper and it opens up and creates an RDP session. And that then connects me into my UMS server for now. So I can ask my UMS to my thing client. So, but that can be anything that can be Citrix here. I mean, you guys don't want this sort of thing, so I'll just show you that. Um, and that's, that's really you know, how what UMS does and how it works on a very basic level. Yes? When you do your scan, if your cards are behind firewalls, you want to put your ports on it? Yep. So, ports wise, um, we operate 30,001, 30,005, 90, 80, and 843. 
for a really sad memory and words like that. But that is the model that we use, uh, and that allows the devices to, so we've got 3001 is from device to uh, UMS, and uh, 3005 is UMS to the line. It might be the other way around, I can't remember, yeah. uh, but they're one way. Yes, you can. So you can set a set of subnets, um, you can create a subnet list. You have the understood for the flat scanner network, which is obviously in my demo environment, obviously you just do scan and ask it. So, okay. so by, by connecting to that, I've actually got myself out of the. Uh, okay, so that's UMS and profiles. But then, I mean, that obviously there's more to it. But I wanted to show you that before I show you the conversion. When we take um, one of the things that we, we really do love doing at iGen is taking yeah. existing PCs, old PCs that people have in their estate, maybe not even that old. Maybe someone's got a couple of things machines or a couple of years old, but they want to go to use things like this, they want to go to use our Android console or, or to get away from using these big legacy chubby desktop PCs. So, what we do is we offer them our UDC or UDC version 2 now, uh, to convert those into our hardware. Now, it's exactly the same operating system that we have on our hardware thing class that we sell now. Um, the only difference is that it has a couple of extra drivers, but obviously we need to support many different drivers to support on those. But in reality, it's exactly the same function, it behaves the same way, it imports into the manual console in the same way, and it can be treated in exactly the same way as a normal thing class. Uh, and due to the way that UMS works, um, we can deploy that remotely using maybe a Pixie server to a deployment device to deploy that out to existing PCs. But one of the really important things to remember about UDC2 is that when you convert a machine in UDC2, it wipes the hard drive. So um, if you get a trial of this product, and we'll give you guys a trial, if you want a trial of the product, just email us, let us know, email me, whatever, I'll sort of license out for you. If, if you put it on your boss's machine, you will have wiped it and it will be ruined. Uh, so you need to make sure that you uh, either take a backup of it if you're so inclined, or find a junk laptop or a junk machine to install, or maybe do it in a virtual machine like that, okay. and that allow you to convert whatever it is. And I'll show you how easy the conversion process is. So let me fire up. Let's close down this machine here. I don't want to run too many virtual machines because my laptop will, will actually fall over. So let me shut that down. And I'll launch a Windows embedded session. Now the reason why I've done a Windows embedded uh, device is because most of our, uh, a lot of, um, there are a lot of thin clients out there that are running Windows embedded as well. So what I was doing for full-size PCs, we can, you can use the same software on existing thin clients. So if you've got um, X manufacturer uh, Windows embedded device and you have problems or you don't like the management console, don't worry about it, we'll just convert it for you and make it behave like a product, you'll get exactly the same functionality. So it's not just for PCs, it can be for anything, any x86 based system really you can convert. And the laptops, you know, those kind of things, we're even looking for like Chromebooks, those sort of devices can be converted in the same way. So there it is, it's a uh, it's embedded. And what we do is we give you one of these. This is a, one of our specialized USB keys. It's a, basically a smart card, it has a small SIM card reader in it, which I know you can up. And in the SIM card, in the reader, and that can take the licenses for our software. That's just one way you can deploy it via a USB key. We can do it via a work plan. Sometimes it's just nice to have a laptop and convert it that way. So here we have the uh, the, the new client. Let me do some bit of device. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to point it to an ISO image of my conversion software. So that's the same thing that's on here. Okay. And I'm going to reboot it. You'll see the actual will appear in the middle. It boots off the ISO. There it is. And it's asking you to convert the device. We're going to go ahead and click yes. And it'll start running the conversion software. Okay, there it is. So now we're at the start. We can choose our language. We're going to choose English. Okay, we get a warning here, um, just telling you that the license for this is applied to the MAC address, uh, but basically that's all we really need to worry about there. Uh, and it tells you what version of firmware is going to install, and even gives you a little list of um, hardware compatibility here. This is a virtual machine, it's going to give you a huge information. If it's a PC, you'll be able to see things like after drive support, those kind of things. Um, 
And here it's just giving me a warning that there's no license currently available, but I will just give that license to it from UMS later. So I hit the school for that. We go through the process. And it's wiping the hard drive and it's putting it across the hard drive OS onto the machine. <coughs> so the process takes a few minutes, um, but once this is done, you get a fully enabled Bing client with exactly the same feature set as our as our, as our Bing clients. So if you want to get a, a demo of the environment that the Vigil set up or for a customer or in your environment, it's a case of installing the UMS, which takes five minutes, finding an old machine somewhere, converting to the UDC, and you get a work fully on the Bing client, join the two together, and you're already ready to go. So in most instances, we're able to get a, a demo of, of our full system up running a customer in about 15 minutes. Uh, and then they can do whatever, yes, whatever they want to. Uh, we'll help them create profiles to connect to whatever their back end environment is. Uh, and then we'll also help them build up their environment. But it, it's not uncommon that we have a fully working system connecting to their VDI uh, and running you know, all their customer applications and everything within about an hour. Do you have a lot of customers using um, Skype for Business? Yes, we do, yeah. And using the Citrix optimization package? We do. As of the last version of firmware 509101, we have the RTME support um, built in there uh, at that level. So there's, a, there's two versions of 509 code, 100 and 101. 100 runs 1.8 version, and uh, 101 is 2.0. So that will allow you to have full, uh, full support. So yeah, we get a lot of DC customers from uh, Skype for Business. Now. But it's certainly now is a bit available. Um, question you were asked a lot, and we weren't able to give these seven answers before, so now we can with pushing out a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, it's all, yeah, all of us. It's the same as this code. Um, just to provide you, you have the hardware that's capable of uh, running the device, uh, running the, the, the software, uh, running our processor and our and stuff. Uh, basically, but to run UDC, we say you need to have a gig processor uh, and to two year round we recommend, um, and that's about it for the minimum specs. Also USB port for the plugin, but that's really what we need to run. Let's take a look at the normal, I think my machine's having a bit of a good skin, but, um, but yeah, just remember with UDC, if you make that conversion, it will work on the machine. So I'll stress that enough, but we've had a few people before someone's done it and they can't get back their data and they're just happy with me. So once this is finished, um, we'll be able to see it in the management console, see it behaving um, I can see now why Alex says don't do live demos, but I think that was actually enough practice. Oh, there, there we go, it's something working now. There you go. So it says now it's successfully completed. We get the reboot. So the reboot CD, okay, there we go. And then that will reboot. And then we'll go and check in our UMS. Okay. Here in my UMS, it should wake up in a moment. There we go, it's connecting to my UMS. And there it is, it's all green, it's now online. And I can take that device now and I can go and drop it into a site. Now. And it network. We'll get that configuration change and connect. One of the really cool things that we can do within within UMS for these kind of devices, whether they're converted or normal devices, is we can set default directory rules. That means that when a device boots up, we use a DNS A record for IGL RM server. The device is after that straight away, get pointed into the UMS, um, and then they will be automatically, depending on certain criteria you can set an IP address range, for example, be dropped into a particular profile, whether in that profile they'll download the special firmware, grab the best profile, be fully configured within the second. So it's zero touch deployment, really. I mean, even if you're running like a PC deployment device, for example, and you're converting to a PC in, in the wild, you don't actually need to visit them at all, because they boot up, they speak with the DNS area or they connect themselves to UMS and they get their profiles and firmware and they're fully running. So you could actually you know, tell someone to go make a cup of coffee, start running the conversion, as long as they have a cup of coffee and take a while and they could come back and there it is, they'll be up and running and they'll be back to the session as they've got before. Do you have to worry about hmm. the 